one meeting of the Traffic and Parking Commission, if you are not satisfied with a decision made by the Traffic and Parking Commission, you may appeal the decision by filing for a writ of certiorari with the Davidson County Chancery or Circuit Court. Your appeal must be filed within 60 days of the date of the entry of the commission's decision. We advise that you seek your own independent legal advice to ensure that your appeal is filed in a timely manner and that all procedural requirements have been met. Uh, going to introduce a motion to comply with the governor's executive order concerning electronic meeting. The items on the meeting agenda constitute essential business of this body and meeting electronically is necessary to protect the health, safety, and welfare of Tennesseans in light of the COVID-19 pandemic. Is there a second to that motion, please? Council Member O'Connell, second. We have a second by Council Member O'Connell. All in favor, Nork, Commissioner Kern. Aye. Commissioner Robbins. Aye. Commissioner Woods. Aye. Commissioner Gilliland. Aye. All right, it has been approved. Okay. I ask approval for today's agenda. Is there a motion, please? So moved, this is Nora Kern. And a second. Stand up, this is Emily Woods. Okay. Uh, the roll call, Commissioner Kern. Aye. Commissioner Robbins. Aye. Commissioner Woods. Aye. Commissioner Gilliland. Aye. Commissioner O'Connell. Aye. All right, it is passed. Approval of the minutes of the December 4th, 2020 Traffic and Parking Commission. Is there a motion to approve, please? Um, <laughs> <laughs> is there a second? This is Sarah Lee, second. Okay, thank you. All in favor, Commissioner Kern. Aye. Commissioner Robbins. Aye. Commissioner Woods. Aye. Commissioner Gillan. Aye. And Commissioner O'Connell. Aye. Aye. Approval of consent agenda. Please note that items on the consent agenda will be voted on at a single time. No individual public hearing will be held, nor will the commission debate these items unless a member of the audience or the commission requests that the item be removed from the consent agenda. Are there any items that anyone's requesting to be removed or debated? Okay. Okay, I will then read the consent agenda and ask for a motion to approve. Item A, a mandatory referral 2020M022AB001, a request for the abandonment of the right of way along a portion of Alley 2058 from Rucker Avenue to 200 feet east of Rucker Avenue. Utility easements to be retained, requested by Development Management Group. Item B, a mandatory referral 2021M001AB001, a request for the abandonment of right of way and easements along Alley 42 from Lee Avenue southward to Drexel Street, requested by Reagan Smith Associates. Item C, mandatory referral 2021M002AB001, a request for the abandonment portion of Lee Avenue for approximately 80 feet west of 7th Avenue to the dead end, utility easements to be retained, requested by Reagan Smith's associate. Freddie, is this down by the room in the end campus where these are? All but one of them, I think okay. is. I was just curious because I know they're doing some work. Right. Yeah, there there are at least two major um, projects occurring in that area. Okay, great. All right, item D, authorized removal of valet operation at 401 Union Street requested by Premier Parking. Item E, authorized removal of a valet operation at 221 2nd Avenue North requested by Premier Parking. 
Item F, authorized removal of valet zone at 210 25th Avenue North, requested by Premier Parking. Item G, authorized reduction in speed limit from 35 miles per hour to 30 miles per hour on Shackleford Road, requested by a resident. And I want to commend this resident for being persistent in getting the speed limit reduced. She contacted her council member and me directly. So she is to be commended for her citizen action. All right, the consent agenda has been read. Is there a motion to approve, please? Commissioner moved, O'Connell. Okay, is there a second? Second, Commissioner Woods. Okay, thank you. Uh, all in favor, Commissioner Kern. Hang on one second. Yes. I would like to um, have some discussion briefly if, if possible. Yes, please. I have uh, just two things, and then I see Mr. Knopf has his hand up, so I just want to make sure we get him if there was a staff comment here as well. Okay. Um, for, for my, well, actually, I'll let, I'll let Mr. Knopf speak first if he if he's, wants the floor. Councilman, I'm real quick. Charde, can you move the hose down to Corby? I'm trying and I can't get it. Thank you, Councilman. Yep. Um, one thing, and I did not see a map in the attachments I got. The the one I referenced, uh, Mr. Chair, that was not in that sort of general vicinity of the roundabout and kind of the the area that uh, is sometimes known as Pie Town by the mission um, is the Rucker Avenue one. That's actually out at Mount Olivet Cemetery. Um, so just just wanted folks to be aware of that on consent. Now, I, this is mostly just a question, I guess, for staff. When we do these abandonments, right, if you look at these maps, um, uh, obviously the abandonment process is, is accruing to the benefit of some of the private developers. Is, the, is there a fee or anything else that occurs with the abandonment um, that, uh, you know, similarly to the, the valet process that we've reviewed that, um, that assigns some kind of value to these such that uh, Metro actually gets the benefit of the abandonment or is this just being given away? For the most part, it's just a giveaway as long as we retain the easements. John, are you on here? John Bogosian is uh, here to represent the mandatory referrals. John, you wanna to add to this? I'm on um, mainly here to discuss um, or help answer questions about the development side. Um, I don't want to speak misinformation about the fee process and why or why we do not collect or value. Um, uh, just for the record, my understanding with right is that um, it's owned by the, the parcel owners and, and public right away is um, operated with the understanding of a public easement to public works which that so in 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 a general sense the abandonment process still preserves the easement opportunity correct except for there are there is one on today's agenda that um the yeah, easements are to be abandoned and the utilities get relocated into metro right away but most of the time we retain the easements. This is Teresa Costones. I can speak to that if I may be recognized. Yes, please. So um, what John said is essentially correct. Um, uh, when Metro acquires in, in right away, they acquire generally in an easement only, um, uh, not, a, not a fee interest. Um, and the concept of government um, acquisition of property rights is that it's going to be as limited as it can be to meet the public need. Um, so that's why we acquire an easement. Um, and the idea is that, the, as John said, that the adjacent property owners retain an underlying fee interest in the property. Um, and if the government no longer has a need for that property, um, then you abandon it. You basically lift that easement up off of that underlying fee interest and it reverts um, to the original property owners. Um, and the idea is that the grant to government was always intended to be limited. It was always intended to be just what government needed. So uh, under that concept, I'm not sure I think that compensation would be appropriate. 
No, I, and that's what I was trying to get at. Thank you so much. That is the explanation I was hoping to get. Um, so I appreciate that. And Mr. Chair, that is all I had for my questions today. Thanks. Okay. Um, so with that said, we'll move to a roll. Uh, in favor of the consent agenda, Commissioner Kern. Aye. Commissioner Robbins. Aye. Commissioner Woods. Aye. Commissioner Gilland. Aye. Commissioner O'Connell. Aye. Okay. All, any opposed? Okay, did not hear. It has passed. Consent agenda has been approved. Okay. Um, new business. Council Member Withers, are you still with us? Um, thank you, Chair. Okay. Um, it's my understanding, I think you still want uh, item A, you wanted yes, to discuss, and item B, I think you wanted to defer. Is that correct? That's correct, Mr. Chair. I would like to defer item B for 14th and Seymour to the March meeting, if I could, just to take that back before the Eastwood neighbors. But I would like to proceed today for a discussion okay. about uh, 9th and Woodland. All right. All right. So item A is an appeal to the staff decision denying an always stop at 9th and Woodland Street requested by council member Withers. So council member Withers, we'll let you have the floor first. Thank you for joining us today. Well, uh, thank you, Chair, and thank you, Commissioners, for your uh, attention and your service. It's a, it's a cold and gloomy day outside, so I hope that everyone's warm at home. Uh, <laughs> um, I come before you today, uh, really, uh, I'm still, as a council member, working through my, my list of constituent inquiries about infrastructure from back when I was uh, canvassing and campaigning in 2015. So uh, sort of working down the list. And this is one of those items that uh, I heard about in 2015 and have continued to have um, requests about from numerous people uh, over the ensuing years. Uh, this is a request for an all-way stop sign here at 9th and Woodland. Uh, one of the things that you will see is that there is a crosswalk that was installed uh, there across one leg of ninth uh, around, well, following the construction of the 901 Woodland Building, which is most mostly known for their lead tenant, which is WeWork. Um, so that has helped at least a little bit. I, I will agree with that statement. Um, what I would say is that um, uh, pre-COVID, uh, that was an area where um, there was some degree of conflict between drivers, particularly drivers trying to come up to Woodland Street, which is you're sort of coming uphill and then trying to enter onto Woodland Street or to cross over into the Edgefield neighborhood. So there's a, a terrain issue. There's a little bit of a visibility issue as well. The 901 Woodland Building does step back from the street a ways. And the reason why it does that is that there are overhead power lines on that north face of Woodland that require that if you build a multi-story building, which that is, that it be stepped back to stay away from those power lines, which is a little bit of a saving grace uh, for that intersection. But nevertheless, it's it's a, there are some visibility challenges that are there, uh, particularly for drivers trying to, to come up and enter Woodland Street off of Main Street. And that does happen a fair amount. In my daily commutes down Main Street, um, what you would observe if you're heading into town is that on Main Street, we have, um, when you come around the curve, there are two points where there are school crossings uh, by East High School, including um, across from the East Library and then at 10th. And then there are also there's a lot of traffic uh, around 7th and 8th as it relates to trying to get to uh, families trying to get to MIG school. So there's a fair amount of traffic congestion in particular in the mornings and inbound traffic uh, increasingly was beginning to sort of dart uh, down 9th and then down Woodland at, at that time. And so that does create a fair amount of traffic congestion. They are trying to make turns at that location. Um, what I would say as well is that from a pedestrian standpoint in particular, there are no brakes or controls on Woodland Street from the light at 5th Street all the way to the light at 10th. And I haven't measured it precisely, but it's at least a half a mile where there are no brakes in traffic. And we know that oftentimes when we have 
um, crosswalks and yield to pedestrian signs. Drivers don't always adhere to that, unfortunately. But there are literally no breaks in traffic controls all the way from 5th to 10th. Uh, and it, it's my judgment that uh, with the opening of the 901 Woodland Building with multiple businesses in it, uh, as well as some other businesses surrounding that, that you do have a lot of pedestrian activity right at that particular intersection. And, uh, and I hear quite a bit from pedestrians that they don't feel safe crossing there, even with the crosswalk and the signage. And I can't blame them. I mean, I, I, I can get across that street probably, but I'm not uh, walking a dog or pushing a baby stroller, for instance, or using a cane. So uh, a lot of this request really is that we have uh, a crosswalk there, we have some uh, signage that encourages drivers to yield to pedestrians, but that doesn't happen very much, uh, and pedestrians are uh, crossing at that intersection quite a bit. We do have, uh, along Woodland Street, when we go consolidated bus lines, there used to be a number 20 bus that went down Woodland, uh, and that was eliminated, and so now um, the only bus service in that area is on Main Street, uh, kind of at the bottom of that hill. And so everyone who wants to utilize public transportation needs to cross that intersection coming from the Edgefield neighborhood to get down the hill to the bus stop at Main, uh, around Main and 9th, which is the busiest um, we go station on the number 56 route. So again, it just goes to this all of these users on the street, I have uh, quite a few emails that I've received, even from folks in the Edgefield neighborhood who drive that area, who said that even as a driver, it's a little scary. Definitely as a pedestrian, it's really scary. Um, and once the economy comes back, uh, we get folks hopefully back into school in person and that school traffic picks up. Uh, once the office users there at WeWork and at the restaurant are back to being fully engaged, it will be really busy. I have a letter as well from the southwest corner of that intersection. Urban Housing Solutions is located there. They serve a lot of population that may not always have vehicles that are trying to get to and from their building there at that corner to access vital housing assistance. Um, just, just the combination of lots and lots of different factors. Uh, I believe that it's wise to, to go ahead and put in a, an always stop at this location now. Even on Main Street, which is really an arterial, even on Main Street, we do have signal controls at 7th and McFerrin. But again, on Woodland, which is much more of a neighborhood street, we have no controls at all for more than a half mile uh, in an area that is very uh, becoming densely developed with businesses as well as with multifamily along that corridor. So my request at this time is to uh, request to the commission to go ahead and approve the all-way stop sign at that location. There is some grant funding from the Greater Nashville Regional Council that I hope to get a local match for that will help us to redesign Woodland entirely uh, between downtown and Five Points. As all of us in government know, uh, even if we get that local match and get started on that, it would be about two years before we get those improvements designed and constructed. But my thought is that with um, vaccines being rolled out, hopefully, uh, if not later this school year, then in the upcoming year, we'll have schools back in session, in person, businesses back open, lots of pedestrian activity going on, uh, and uh, lots of new development coming along uh, as buildings are repaired or replaced from tornado damage as well. I just foresee that later on this year that we will see that those vehicle and pedestrian conflicts will increase uh, pretty dramatically. And I would, would hope that the commission would support this request, which comes from business owners, the Edgefield neighborhood group, uh, largely um, uh, lots of folks are, are all on the same page that we, we need some sort of control there at Nanta Woodland and would hope that the commission would uh, support that uh, today. Or if we need to keep talking about it, I certainly can do that as well, but would hope that we would uh, consider that today. And then uh, if and when we do have uh, further design abilities for Woodland Street as a whole, certainly we could revisit it at that time if something like say a roundabout or whatnot were, were thought to be more appropriate then sure, we could revisit it. But, but I think that this is the safest solution both for drivers and especially for pedestrians at this point in time to access affordable housing, businesses, schools, and transportation. Thank you. Okay. Hey, thank you, council member. Appreciate your comments. Mr. Knopf, is there anything else to add to this? 
Always good to see you, Councilman Withers. Um, so Derek Hagerty is going to present our analysis of it, but while, while he's getting ready, um, this is the one I sent you guys a few emails on that mm -hmm. we're getting from the resident. So just putting the pieces together. Mr. Hagerty, your floor. Thank you very much, Derek Hagerty, Nashville Public Works. Uh, before you on the screen, you can see our always stop warrant analysis. Um, following the directions laid out on the Federal Highway Administration's Manual on Uniform Traffic Control Devices. Um, this is what we use to evaluate whether stop signs are an appropriate form of traffic control at intersections. Um, Metro code uh, points us in this direction to use this manual. Um, so I think I mentioned last meeting, there's really two things we're looking at. One is volume. Stop signs are primarily used for volume control. Um, you know, right now, volumes are fairly low across the city, so we are looking at historical data on this. Uh, on the major approach, we're looking for 300 vehicles an hour. We believe that Woodland Street does meet this in typical times based on some historical TDOT data we have on hand. Ninth Street, however, we do believe is pretty well below the 200 vehicles an hour coming from the minor approach. Uh, the other thing we're looking at is the crash history warrant looking for five crashes within a 12 month period that can be corrected by an always stop control. Um, we did not see this present at this location. We did see, I believe it was three within a 12 month period. So, you know, five is kind of what Federal Highway Administration recommends to point to a systematic issue. And that's what we go with on our recommendations. Thank you, Mr. Haggerty. All right. Is there a motion on this matter? This is Commissioner Woods. I move to approve. Commissioner O'Connell seconds. We have a first and a second. Is there any further discussion? Okay. Call for it. Commissioner O'Connell. Aye. Commissioner Gillenhan. Aye. Commissioner Woods. Aye. Commissioner Robbins. Aye. Commissioner Kern. Aye. Okay. Council member, your always stop has been approved. Thank you so much, commissioners. I appreciate your time and consideration. All right. And then uh, I asked for a motion to defer item B, which is denying an always stop at North 14th Street and Seymour Avenue. I make a motion to delay, uh, postpone till next month. This is Commissioner Woods. Okay, is there a second, please? I'll second, this is Commissioner Kern. And that was the request to, to March, Council Member? Yes, uh, it was or... to the March meeting, if that's okay. Okay, all right. So one month deferral. We have a first and a second. All in favor, Commissioner O'Connell. All right. Mr. Gilland. Aye. Commissioner Woods. Aye, but I think I may have said one month, and we actually want two months, because next month is, I recall, February. <laughs> I hope. Yes, I think it was for one month, wasn't it, two Council months. Member? It was for two months, please, two to months. the March okay. meeting, please. Okay. Right. Do I need to change anything on my motion? Just, just clarify that the motion's for two months. The motion to... Um, Postpone is for two months until the month of March. All right. Okay. I think I was to you, Commissioner Woods. Yes. What's your vote? Yes. Commissioner Robbins. Aye. Commissioner Kern. Aye. All right. It, it has been passed. The next new business item is the council referral of. BL 2021594 to modify Metro Code 12.20.020, which will reduce the default speed limit on local roadways from 30 miles per hour to 25 miles per hour. Something we've long been waiting for. Mr. Hammond. <sighs> Thank you, Chairman Green and members of the commission, Jeff Hammond with Metro Public Works. You have 
been waiting for this for quite some time, and we're very pleased that this is, in a sense, a culmination of, of months worth of uh, effort for us, years worth of effort to bring this to this point. This is a mandatory referral of BL 2021. 594, which often would have shown up on a consent agenda, but in this case, uh, you, you all have a, a long and spirited history with this, so we wanted to, to give you an opportunity to see it, as well as, as, as I go through this, I, when we get to the end, I, I would like to make one recommendation further to you, uh, possibly in the form of an amendment, if you are so inclined to approve this. Um, the, the legislation is not very long. There, there are a number of recitals leading into it, which I don't think we need to go through. Um, but there are there are five sections of of the proposed legislation. Uh, section one basically identifies what we are doing, and as, as we have briefed you all on um, through the months, it's been uh, that we are lowering the default speed limit from 30 miles an hour to 25 miles an hour on local streets in the urban services district. We'll talk more about that in just a minute. Section two um, it is really is really for you all and it's geared towards uh, clarifying that this does not change the authority of this commission. And in fact, I, I think this serves as a reminder that you all have uh, jurisdiction over speed limits in individual streets in the county. Uh, however, because this is a, a code change, it does need to go through council. Uh, but, but once we get through this process, all of that uh, reverts back to you all to hear and grant uh, exceptions to the speed limits uh, as you deem appropriate. Um, another thing that section two does is, is really tries to clarify that um, any um, any uh, exceptions anyone might want to take with this does not uh, necessarily bog down the legislation. So when you all hear something or decide to hear a, a proposed uh, speed limit change, that doesn't affect the, the legislation that's going through and vice versa. So that's that was intentional to try and uh, separate those processes so we don't we don't um, unnecessarily prolong the process of either one of them. Section three is really the business part of, of the legislation and it uh, it, it, it tackles section 12, uh, 12, 20, 020 of Metro code. Uh, just to clarify that uh, the speed default speed limit is going from 30, we change it now to 25 miles an hour. This is the point at which I would like to um, um, entertain the idea to uh, amend this somewhat. As we've gotten through this, and this happened late last week, and I appreciate very much working with Teresa Costonis as, as we um, uncovered a little bit of, of lack of clarity that we would like to clear up here um, if you think it's appropriate. Um, urban district, as it's defined in 1220.020 in Metro Code, is actually defined. And, and that was something that, given the language of urban services district, an urban district, it can be a little, it can be a little confusing. It, it apparently was to us as we drafted this. Uh, urban district does have a distinct definition that is different than urban services district. And so our uh, proposed amendment is to modify this to say 25 miles per hour <clears throat> uh, within the urban services district and 30 miles per hour on any on any uh, in any urban district outside of the urban services district. So there's a lot of urbans and districts and so forth. But the idea behind an urban district was that it, it could look like Old Hickory or or any um, any subdivision uh, outside uh, that might find that might be in the general services district. Whereas what we were trying to do is limit this uh, first and foremost to, to roadways in the urban services district. And so that's the idea behind this clarification. Um, it wouldn't that that means it wouldn't change anything outside of the urban services district. And, and that really specifically targets what the intent of the legislation was. So. Uh, that's the that's the change that, that we are proposing um, happen, but um, I will stop with that. Section four and five are, are typical administrative language in the juris in, in, in any um, in any legislation, and so with that, I'll stop and be glad to entertain any questions you might have. Matt, 
Mr. Hammond to kind of yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll describe the map. Uh, the map is, is available um, uh, from our website. Uh, might be the easiest way to find it, um, but we can certainly get that. To, I think you all as commissioners have received that. And what the map does is, again, it is not tied to the legislation. It does not um, legally define any of this, but, but we think it's very helpful for constituents, council members, anybody who's interested in this to be able to, to, to go and see what streets exactly uh, are affected. As you zoom into the map, you don't see it in this view here. What you're looking at there, those purple lines are council districts. So if you zoom into the map, that can happen here. You will see um, a lot of lines start popping up. Corby, can you zoom in a little bit? As you zoom into the map, you'll see um, a lot of lines that are that are roads. These those gray ones there are uh, defined as arterials and collectors, and, and this this definition of local street is defined in Metro's major and collector street plan that is administered by our planning department. But as you zoom into the map, you begin to see roads and their classifications. And so anything that's red on the map would be affected by this legislation. Those are our local streets, and those would be the ones going from 30 to uh, 25. In the downtown area, you have a lot of state routes that all converge here, and most of those are defined as something other than local. Uh, we all know that a lot of those are already, um, you know, the prevailing speeds there are low, but everything that's in red, um, uh, would be, um, again, 25 miles an hour. There are some other classifications there. You might see some blue lines that represent roads that um, we are advocating uh, remain at, at their posted speed limit, generally 30, even though they meet otherwise the definition of, of what we are changing. They are local roads within the urban services district, but the reason why we would advocate that those remain uh, is because they service industrial areas or institutional areas, things like that, where we have a totally different land use than what we are trying to target. Uh, this is where um, in industrial and commercial business is transacted. We have truck volumes and those types of things. And our intent is really to hone in on, on neighborhoods uh, where there's uh, the type of land use that fosters high levels of pedestrian activity and, and where slower speeds is, is very much a part of the quality of life there. So, um, uh, the other colors you might see are red, yellow, and orange, and those just identify streets that already have a speed limit that is less than 25 miles an hour. So some of our walking districts that you might remember from a few years ago, which really initiated this whole process, uh, those fall into that category, as do a few others. So you can you can get on there and 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 zoom around and see what what streets would be impacted and what wouldn't. And we hope that's a useful tool to you. We also are, are working on a, a uh, frequently asked questions because we do foresee um, you know, some questions coming up as this uh, approaches second reading at the next council uh, meeting. And we've already been approached with a lot of these questions. So we're, we're um, formalizing that and try to get it into a one or two page document that's uh, easily digestible for our constituents. Thank you very much. Um, before taking any comments, Ms. Costonis, uh, what's the, what is the action to be required by the commission? So um, you're making a recommendation of the legislation to cancel if we do so um, approve it. What I'm asking is that you make that recommendation um, subject to a condition that the amendment, the conceptual amendment that he described, um, distinguishing that that you would have a 25 miles per hour in the urban services district on local roads in the urban services district, um, and 30 miles per hour in any urban district outside of the urban services district. Um, it's important for you to include that in your motion. Um, it can be. Uh, it's an. It's just a distinction that. Um, 
it is confusing that that urban district definition is in, included in Title 12 as a separate concept from the urban services district or USD that we're so accustomed to talking about. So we just wanted to make it crystal clear and consistent with the original intent of the bill, which was to limit it to the urban services district um, so that um, streets within an urban district within the GSD, the general services district would remain at 30. Um, and um, so um, uh, I think the, the amendment that Jeff described would accomplish that. Um, uh, we talked to the council office and he is fine with um, the traffic and parking commission kind of up approving um, that amendment just in concept, like you don't have to have exact wording for it um, uh, and, um, and, and, and making an overall recommendation of the legislation um, subject to that conceptual amendment. Um, and recommending that for approval to council. Thank you. Commissioners, any comments, questions? Um, well, I'll just say, I think this is really exciting and I've it's definitely been waiting for it for a number of years and um, we've seen them speeds are up this year. And so I think it's more important than ever. Um, so excited that this is happening and would be happy to make a motion for that amendment. I have a, a question. Proceed, please. Uh, I agree with everything that uh, Commissioner Kern said. And when Jeff, when you and Chip get together that little one or two page summary, can the commissioners of traffic and parking get a copy of that too, in case we uh, to refer to for questions in the community, et cetera? Uh, you certainly can, absolutely, and I, and I failed to mention we are working with a a, uh, a focus group, much like we have on some of our other efforts, and, and Commissioner Woods has a, been a great part of that, and uh, we will certainly get, get that information to you. Okay. Commissioner Kern, did you have a question to ask? Oh, your hand is up. Okay. Council Member O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I you know. Councilmember Henderson has had some questions about this, and I believe she is in the attendees. Could we get her elevated okay. to panel? I did just not the... see her. Councilmember Henderson, are you on the line? I think we need to get her elevated from attendee to panel. Okay, it looks like she's there now. Okay, I did not see her. Uh, yes, sir, Commissioner, I'm here. Thank you. Right. Please proceed, Council Member. Well, I'll, I'll defer to Councilman O'Connell. I don't know if he had additional questions um, as well. Uh, no, I, my, the only reason I raised my hand was to make sure we got you recognized. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, commissioners, I, I, I was a co-sponsor of the initial uh, resolution along with Council Lady Allen and, and many colleagues. Uh, setting setting this process in motion. So, like Ms. Kern, I'm I'm very excited to see that this is uh, before you today, and um, I appreciate Mr. Hammond's uh, work uh, and uh, staffs uh, pulling together an FAQ and a map. Um, my question, I guess, is um, for Ms. Costonis, but um, possibly also for Mr. Hammond, wanting to understand kind of practically what the amendment would mean and what are, quote, urban districts in the GSD. Um, so I serve both the USD and the GSD. And so I have um, quite a few streets that cross those boundaries. Um, I serve two satellite cities that are in the GSD. Um, my district is also adjacent to another satellite city. And so um, I have worked pretty, diligently to begin to kind of plant the seeds with my um, uh, uh, city manager uh, colleagues and commissioners in our, in our satellite cities um, uh, to encourage them to begin facilitating a similar discussion um, in, in their own districts. And so um, I just, I, I, as you all know, commissioners, uh, th those cities, um, uh, you know, Berry Hill among them and Councilman Sledge's district, they determine, uh, you know, what those, um, uh, speed limits are on their own streets, um, but we have a lot of places where we have kind of um, convergences. And so I just want us to be uh, sure that we are kind of being uh, constructive and, and, and mindful of um, those intersections. And thus, um, Ms. Costonis, as you were describing it, I, I wasn't quite understanding what you meant by 
urban districts in the GSD? Um, sure, that's a good question. Hang on, I was just pulling up. So basically within Title 12 of the Metro Code, there is a separate definition for the term urban district, which is a term that is referenced in the code section that we're amending with this bill, which is 1220.020. So the urban district definition, which is in um, code section 1204.430, says urban district means the territory contiguous to and including any street which is built up with structures devoted to business industry or dwelling houses situated at intervals of less than 100 feet for a distance of a quarter mile or more. So that's an old definition. And in hindsight, of course, we kind of wish that they had picked a term that was a little less close to urban services district, which as discussed in the charter obviously means something quite different. Obviously it means the original boundaries of the original city of Nashville, plus all the territory that has been annexed to that USD over the years. Um, so that's obviously really different from that definition in 1204-430. So we just, um, the, the original intent of the bill, as I understand it, and Jeff can speak more to this, was to limit it to the urban services district. Um, and so um, that reference to the urban district um, was maybe a little bit of an oversight, but we wanted to make it clear. I mean, if that was in the original 1220-020, but we wanted to make it clear here that what this bill is accomplishing is a reduction in speed from 30 to 25 miles per hour in the urban services district and that streets with that are within urban districts within the general services district would remain 30. Okay, um, I, I appreciate that clarification. Are there urban districts in the GSD that come to mind that you all think would be appropriate for this change? And then that would just be something that the commission would address separately. I believe somebody alluded to like Old Hickory Village or, or you know, some areas uh, such as that. I guess I just know from serving the GSD, absolutely there are areas that are, you know, rural kind of higher speed, but um, I, I do, I have quite a few areas of, of GSD that uh, comparatively to their adjacent USD areas, um, you know, other than they're not being streetlights, you, you really wouldn't know the difference. Um, and so, you know, as you all know, the distinction is, you know, trash delivery, uh, brush pickup, street lights. Um, but for some of those of us who serve both USD and GSD, where we have you know, one street that might be in both. Um, I'm, I'm just uh, wondering uh, practically how that's going to um, kind of uh, work, work out. Would that just, I've understood if it's in a satellite city, they'll address separately, but internal to our GSD, Mr. Hammond, are, do we have areas that we think might be well suited to 25 or 20 miles per hour, et cetera? And how would you propose those being addressed? Uh, I think we absolutely do. And and what we have recognized and, and tried to put quite a bit of consideration on is, is how do we really get the results that we're looking for? Um, for our county not having a, a distinct city limit line, county limit line like most do complicates it a little bit. And so when, when we decided to limit this to the urban service district, it was because we were trying to replicate um, uh, the features of, of land use and, and roadway characteristics and traffic volumes and, and pedestrian volumes and all those kind of things that make this limit work uh, in more urbanized areas. I think we all recognize if we went out to, to some of the further out areas of the county um, in, in what, what we would have thought as rural, rural roads, it wouldn't make sense to, to drop those speed limits. There's just the, the, the roadway design doesn't work, the land use doesn't work. That's not the intent. And so urban services district, well and perfect, became kind of our surrogate to say we want to target the most urbanized areas. And it is isn't perfect, and, and you're absolutely right. Yes, we believe that there are areas in the GSD to certainly have all of those same uh, you know, uh, land use and roadway design features that make it work really well. But um, to avoid in trying to identify each of those, like for this step, this was a, a good way to get um, certainly the, the, the majority of, of streets in the county 
classified this way. And then there's always um, the possibility of going in and looking at any of these subdivisions or, or more urban areas in GSD individually at a later time. Okay, I appreciate that. And then the process then would be just for those constituents with, with questions and concerns that they would come back much in a similar process here to uh, Traffic and Parking Commission um, to request that reduction. You all would see the land use, the, the right of way width, and, and determine if 25 was, a, was appropriate at that time. Is that correct? That's correct. Yes, okay. yeah, I appreciate the clarification. All right. Thank you, Council Member. All right. Are there any other comments? All right, so this is where uh, council, legal council, is this where we need a motion, please? I think Nora has, Miss Kern, Commissioner Kern, has said she would make the motion and it needs to be properly amended. Can you help her with the language, please? Sure, I think it's a, a motion to recommend approval subject to um, an amendment that would note that the 25 mile per hour speed reduction would be limited to the urban services district and that within the GSD in urban districts, the speed limit would remain 30. And Mr. Chair, may I point yes. over here? Yes. Um, yes. If, if, if we have that amendment, um, I don't know, Ms. Costanas, would, would you communicate to John Cooper in the Metro Council office accordingly? I already did, um, and okay, he agreed perfect. that as long as you all adopt it kind of conceptually, at your, the, the, your motion to approve is sort of yep. conceptually subject to it, um, that that should be fine for purposes of council adopting it with the amendment later. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Right. So, Commissioner Kern, would you like to... Uh, Sure, uh, I'll, make, I'll make a motion for approval um, subject to an amendment that notes that section 3A um, refer, should be referring to 25 miles per hour in the urban service district and that urban districts outside of that will remain the same. I think most of that. Okay, based on the nod of the head, that is correct. <laughs> uh, a couple of seconds. You can go to law school now, okay. All right, is there a second? Council Member O'Connell, you seconded it. Okay. I did. All right, any further discussion? I will call the roll. Okay, Commissioner Kern. Aye. Commissioner Robbins. Aye. Commissioner Woods. Aye. Commissioner Gilliland. Aye. Commissioner O'Connell. Aye. Okay, and I just, want to commend uh, and thank Mr. Hammond for all your work with this. I know it's been a long process, but uh, maybe it's like most good things, it's worth waiting for. So thank you very much for your efforts. Uh, the next item on the agenda uh, is authorized residential parking permit on Arrington Street requested by a resident in Council District 5, and I think the council member, Parker, are you still with us, please? Yes, commissioners, this is uh, council member Parker, I'm here. All right, well, thank you for your patience while we discuss these other items. All right, uh, Ms. Marshall, I'll let you do the overview, please. Basically, this is a request for permanent parking on Arlington Street. We've done our review, but we're short of signatures. So if it's okay with the council member, we would like to defer for one more month to make sure we meet all the requirements for residential permit parking. Okay. Council member Parker, is that, are we still waiting for some more signatures? Yeah, uh, as I understand it from, um, uh, Ms. Marshall's update just now. Yes, that is the case, and I'm perfectly fine with uh, deferral, and um, I will work with um, Ms. Marshall and some of the neighbors over there who've been working on this to make sure we get those remaining signatures needed. Okay, thank you. All right, so if we could get a motion to defer. If we defer, Ms. Costones, if we defer indefinitely, it means this item could be brought back up at any time. Is that correct? Um, so I believe, yes, you you would have to just let staff know or 
I don't know if staff would already know to put it back on the agenda at some future time. Okay. Um, when, it, when it is appropriate, when the, uh, when the um, right. signatures so are expired. A definite deferral is better than a month, and that way it can just come back up when we're ready. Is that correct? Okay. So is there a motion? We need a motion to defer, please. This is Commissioner Willis, uh, so moved. I'm sorry. I'll, oh. uh, I'll be I'll be Commissioner Woods a second, Mr. Chair. Okay, there we go. We have a first and a second. Any further discussion? Call the roll. Commissioner Kern. <laughs> Commissioner Robbins. Aye. Commissioner Woods. Aye. Commissioner Gilhan. Aye. Commissioner O'Connell. Aye. Aye. Okay. We'll get that deferral. All right. We have a whole series of items. Council Member Sledge, uh, Mr. Knopf, are we going to defer these items B through H? That is the request of the council member. Okay. All right. All right. I'd like to, if we can get a motion to defer items B, C, D, E, F, G, and H. So move, O'Connell. Okay. Okay. Commissioner O'Connell has made a motion. Is there a second? Second, Commissioner Woods. Commissioner Woods has made a second. All in favor, Commissioner Kern. Aye. Commissioner Robbins. Aye. Commissioner Woods. Aye. Commissioner Gilland. Aye. Commissioner O'Connell. Aye. All right, that has passed. Okay, the next item on the agenda is authorize a valet zone at Children's Way for 1601 21st Avenue South requested by Parking Management Company. And I think Council Member Cash, are you still with us? I am still with you, Chairman. Okay. All right. Ms. Marshall, can you give us some update on this, please? Okay, we received the application from Parking Management Company for a valet. They want to utilize Children's Way. They want to use three parking spaces, and the hours of operations will be 10 a.m. to midnight. Okay. All right, Commissioner Cash, I, or is this the item that you were here to address, please? Yes. Uh, <clears throat> Thank you, sir. Uh, I know that um, this was up last time and deferred uh, in part because the um, the commission is considering um, changes to the valet uh, program. And uh, part of that will make sure that Metro is uh, receiving <clears throat> compensation for lost meter spaces. And I believe uh, this was deferred in hopes that uh, the other uh, item could, or the other issue y'all are considering might be able to catch up. So um, I, I am in support of, of this request. However, I am also in support of uh, Metro upgrading its valet policies and um, collections uh, to improve, you know, collection of, of what has been seen as lost revenue. Uh, so I guess, I, and I, at the last meeting, I'm sorry, I was, I had a planning and zoning committee meeting at the same time and was kind of in and out. So uh, if somebody could recap for me exactly what's happening with the, um, the valet uh, legislation under consideration. All right, Mr. Hammond, can you speak to that please? Especially in terms of the timeline. Yeah. Not every detail. Um, as, as we um, agreed at the last meeting, um, we would we would do a um, I guess I would call it a public hearing, although it's targeted mainly to to those most affected by valet in, in the midtown and downtown areas. That has not happened. Uh, we have our our public outreach staff working with um, those in, in, in the downtown area, and you know the the events of Christmas 
day morning have, have uh, thrown a, some, somewhat of a wrinkle into that. Um, I still think we're on track to come back to the commission, uh, having made that, having held that meeting in, at the March meeting, but our time frame was to come back and report uh, and, uh, and give the commission another opportunity to uh, or modify or whatever it chooses to do at that March meeting. That would be in two months. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I know that the construction for um, this restaurant is still ongoing, and I believe I heard at the last meeting that there was like a, a February date, sometime in date in February. Is there any? Is the applicant for this on? Is there an applicant for this on the line, or somebody from Vanderbilt? I don't. I don't think so today. Okay. okay. Um, uh, Jay, excuse me, this is Diane with Public Works again. JT Manor with Park and Management Company was on the call, but I'm not sure if he's still there or not. Okay. Yeah, yes, I am. I don't know if you can hear me. Okay. Mr. Maynard, can you speak to the timing of this issue, please? Uh, yes, and actually the owner of the restaurant's on call as well. Okay. He just sent me an email. But... Hey, uh, this is Webb Bull. We're probably shooting for first of March. Webb Wilson is on, on the call and he's unmuted as well. Okay. Yes. Hi, can you hear me? This is Webb Wilson. Yes. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Uh, yeah, the, the timing is uh, we're shooting for mid February timeframe for the first construction to be complete. Let's see. Uh, so I think the issue, Ms. Costones, um, from a legal perspective, can can we approve this valet stand, even though we haven't approved our new valet policy, make this valet stand comply with our the policy that we think we want to implement that. I don't know if that's the best way to phrase it, but. Um, that seems awkward to me. I, I don't think that we can anticipate what the commission is going to adopt in future until that actually happens. Um, and so um, maybe doing like a, a, the kind of temporary enclosure permit that we've been using is kind of a, um, pilot for valet stands. Um, uh, I think Diane can speak to that um, uh, when they're they're first introduced um, to, to get you into March after the commission has had a chance to um, make a decision on that overall policy um, would would be a better approach. Oh, okay, so what I'm hearing is if we kind of granted a valet stand, for example, six months, um, then we could revisit the issue again. Is that correct? Um, no, a valet stand permits are for a year under the code. Um, but um, uh, the I think when, before this commission can actually approve a valet stand, Public Works um, has had um, a the use of um, kind of lane closure permits to kind of allow kind of the functioning operation of a valley stand, which also gives them to, the ability to collect some data and make sure it's working well um, before they actually come to the commission and ask for, you know, formal approval for an annual permit. Um, but I'd, I'd defer to Diane if she wants to weigh in and talk about how, how they do that. Hi. Okay, this is Diane again. Okay, we do have the option of doing a temporary valet permit and they will be charged based on the number of days that they utilize that permit. Parking management company has done some of these temporary permits in the past, so we can work with them on that if that is the desire. Hi. Uh, so another is, question, this please. Teresa, this is Teresa Costanis again. If I may just clarify that a little bit more, um, maybe with Diane's help. I think that those are usually pretty short term, Diane, right? Like like a month or something like that, or maybe a couple months at most. Normally we do those on a 30 day basis. Okay. So 
So if I'm hearing correctly, Public Works has the authority to operate this valet stand on a temporary basis until we, the, we, the commission, approve it on the year permit basis. Is that correct? It's correct. Okay. Uh, fellow commissioners, any thoughts? Mr. Chair, I had my hand up. Yes, go ahead, please. Thank you. Um, my point was if we move our ballet policy to sort of a parking zone based approach that any future renewals of even existing valet permits um, would trigger an appropriate uh, formula based collection of fees that it would not just be $50 for almost anyone regardless of whether uh, parking had been removed. If that is in fact the case for the proposal, I mean, honestly, even if not at this point, I think that's the that's the direction that it's probably the most sensible for us to move. And I, I would personally be comfortable um, approving this valet based on what I understand about the policy that uh, Public Works has recommended that we consider. All right, any other comments? I have a quick question. If we approved it today, would they not be assessed if, and then pass something in March that would change the fee calculation? Would this or any other ballot passed in the month or two beforehand not be assessed that potentially higher fee until they're, they come up for renewal? So in a, a year's time, or would everybody be reassessed regardless? of how old their permit was um, when a new, if a new policy passed. I don't know if that makes sense, but. Y'all want me to take that? This is Teresa Castellanos again. Yes, please. Yes, please. Um, so I, I think that, that it would not. Um, I think that if you um, are granted an annual permit, you know, you would be granted, you pay the fee that would be enforced at the time that it it's granted to you, and then when it expires and comes up for renewal, you would follow the new policy from that point forward. So does that mean that if we do a temporary permit that it falls under that same category, or is a temporary permit something completely separate? No, because that would only be um, like 30 days or maybe, you know, if you renew it more than once, like 60 days. Um, so like once those 30 or 60 day period expire, um, then they would still have to ask for a new annual permit and the new annual permit occurs after the new policy is adopted would be subject to it. Thank you. Uh, if, I could ask, if, I, if I could ask a question. Yes, go ahead, Councilman. So, thank you. So so does that mean, and, and I'm not totally sure I understood what Councilman O'Connell was saying, but does that mean like if the meters are removed now, uh, but then they're, because we haven't adopted a new policy yet, uh, it's not until a year later that the new fee comes up, but the, but the parking meters have already been removed. Does that mean that um they don't that the that the fee isn't doesn't take into account that meters are being removed or does it still kind of look back to hey three meters were removed there does that make sense yes do y'all want me to take that one again? please please um, legal so counsel. that was um very similar to a question that council member o'connell um asked last month um and, and we did talk about that. And um, I, I think that um, the option that um, uh, the commission and public works have uh, is always to replace the meters in, in a meet parking meter zone. Um, so whenever such a fee comes up for renewal, um, uh, there'll be multiple options available, one of which would be replacing the meters and one of which would be a valley, another valley parking permit. Um, and so, um, so given that dynamic, um, if um, Public Works is to um, forego replacing the meters, then it's um, uh, it, it, where that is an option um, and where there were meters there formerly, um, 
then that is something that should be taken into consideration um, in Mr. Hammond's um, draft um, uh, parking policy, valley parking um, permit policy. Um, but I, I'll also defer to Jeff and make sure that, that he agrees that's how his policy would work. Uh, that's correct as, as we have drafted it now. Thank you. This is Diane again. Okay, they're not requesting the meters to be removed. They just want to utilize them from 10 a.m. to midnight. Our parking meters are enforced from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Seems like that would work out even better. So it, they would just have to pay for the hours that they don't use them. All right. So what I'm asking for legal counsel, how, how does this commission move forward with this request? Please. I mean, it, it's such your pleasure. Um, my suggestion was to do like the 30 day temporary lane closure um, permit um, to allow them to operate the valley stand and then um, take up the um, uh, if y'all are going to take up the policy that Mr. Hammond presented last month in March, um, uh, then you, know, you can give them those 30 days extensions up until that um, meeting occurs. Um, then at that meeting, if that policy is adopted, um, then you can reconsider granting them an annual permit that will then be subject to that new enforced policy. So based upon that interpretation, it's my understanding, then the commission doesn't have to take any action. Public works has the authority to keep the permit 30 days at a time. Is that correct? You can defer for a couple of months subject okay. to public works um, uh, granting them a temporary lane closure permit if that is warranted. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I believe I'm comfortable with that. Okay, so the council member is comfortable with that. So what we want to do, it sounds like, is we need a motion to defer. So moved. Commissioner Kern has seconded. Okay, we'll do the roll. Commissioner O'Connell. Aye. Commissioner Gillian. Aye. Commissioner Woods. Aye. Commissioner Robbins. Aye. And Commissioner Kern. Aye. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member, for your patience with us today. My pleasure. Thank you. All right. The last item on the agenda is uh, authorized no parking on the west side of Vine Court from Harding Pike to 200 feet south of Harding Pike requested by a resident. There seems to be a theme today. Um, I'm going to request a one month deferral. Let me, let me double check with Council Lady Murphy one more time on this one. All right. So moved. We have a first, there's second. Second, Kern. Commissioner Kern. All right. We'll do a roll. Commissioner Kern. Aye. Commissioner Robbins. Aye. Commissioner Woods. Aye. Commissioner Gillan. Aye. And Commissioner O'Connell. Aye. Okay. Thank you. Uh, let me just take a point of personal privilege here. At the beginning of the meeting, I needed to say something, but I forgot. Uh, you know, one of our commission members, uh, Miss Betsy Williams, was not at our meeting today for obvious reasons. She unfortunately is a direct victim of the Christmas Day events in downtown Nashville. And uh, I think as of today, she's still not able to get back into her place. And so just want to uh, let her know and how much we uh, are, I don't know, words can't describe our view about what happened to her, to her and her place. I know that she was involved in reporting the incident to the police. 
prior to the event happening and helped save lives. And we are grateful for that. And uh, whatever, Commissioner Williams, uh, out in the public, just know your fellow commissioners are here for you, whatever we can do to, to assist you. And again, we want to just call out all members of Public Works and the police and others who assisted with this event. Uh, to list too numerous to name, but again, uh, we will be Nashville strong and just wanted to make sure that Ms. Williams knew we were thinking of it. Um, Mr. Chair, can I yes. can I jump in and echo that? I had I had actually intended to make remarks very similar to yours to commend uh, Commissioner Williams is one of our true citizen leaders. I mean, this is not just a resident effect. I mean, she jumped right in, has been an incredibly strong advocate for that corridor for a long time. I've partnered with her on a number of projects, uh, and I know she is distraught about even the potential loss uh, of some of this. So I, I cannot echo your sentiment any further. Um, this did obviously take place in District 19. I've been in touch with Betsy, been on calls with her. She's committed to not just rebuilding, but as much restoration and care as we can recover here from this devastating event. And I really do appreciate your making recognition of that. So thank you, Mr. Chair. You are you are welcome. Does anybody else want to make a comment on this matter? I want to thank uh, Commissioner Betsy Williams for uh, reaching out and to our council and our other elected officials and our first responders uh, were beyond amazing that day. They were incredible. Thank you. Uh, so thank you, everyone. Commissioner Gilman. I would like to make a motion to adjourn. All right. It is all in favor. All right. It has been approved. Okay. Thank you, everyone. We'll see you next month. Thank you. This has been a service of the Metro National Network. If you would like to see this presentation again, or for more information about this and other programs, visit Nashville.gov.